Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Mrs. Biology with Kino. And in this video, we are going to discuss about the translocation. So get ready with the pen and paper. Let's get started. So now plants, they are not just great at creating their own food from the sunlight, but they are also excellent in moving those food around. Say for example in this picture when they have the excess food they move it to the storage area. For example, carrot or the potato. Right here, the carrot plants. They move food down and it is prepared here and it is moving food down into the and they will store there for the future. Now let's say maybe during the winter season when there is not much snow. In that case, what happens is this plant cannot photosynthesize them. So what they do is they can move this food up to the green fields from the stored heat. This process of moving food around wherever they want is known as translocation. But the big question is how they do that? Like basically how they understand that which part of the plant requires food and which does not. And secondly, what all mechanisms are there? What are mechanisms they use in transporting this food? So let's find out. So before we continue, let's back up a little bit with the structure of the food. Okay, so let's see the structure of the phloem. To understand well how translocation occurs. So here in the picture with this we are going to learn about the structure. So just a second. Yeah. Here we go. We have the clear picture now. So basically if you observe over here phloem contains a unique tube like structure which is known as sleeve tubes. Unlike xylem vessels, cell tubes are made up of living cells. We have seen that how xylem vessels, they are made up of dead cells, which has a lignin component in them, which maintains the integrity. But it's not the same in the phloem. In the phloem, the sieve tubes are made up of living cells. Sieve tubes, they have many elongated sieve elements. Which you can see right here, which are also known as sieve tube elements, as shown over here, and they are joined end to end vertically to form a continuous tube like this. So, so sieve tube element, which is also here, they are joined vertically to form a continuous tube. Now, each sieve element is a living cell, like how the normal cell looks like. They have the cellulo cell wall, which is made up of celluloids, like how the normal plant cell have. They do have the cell surface membrane and the cytoplasm, which also contains endoplasmic reticulum and a bit of the mitochondria. However, the amount of cytoplasm present is very less, but there is no nucleus in the sieve tube element. So, and uh, there are no ribosomes present. So I'll just show you how it looks like. There you go. Have the sieve uh, elements. Okay. There is a cellulose wall, cell surface membrane, endoplasmic reticulum, and mitochondria are present, but there is no presence of nucleus or ribosomes. Cytoplasm are also present in very small amount. So I hope you are clear first of all with this structure which is very very important. So sieve tubes mainly contains a sieve element like cells which are arranged vertically. So you need to remember first of all what sieve elements. Now we are going to talk about the companion cells which accompany the sieve elements all the time. So right here is the companion cell, which is arranged like this. Okay. Of 
apart from the companion cell over here the C plates are present which is the uh, most striking features of the C elements they are just the end walls you see they are the, they are making the end walls of each C elements this C plates they just connect both the C elements they are made up of large pores for the flow of the flowing cell from one sieve element to the next. So this makes the end wall of the sieve elements. However, there was no end wall present in the diagram. So if you take a note over here, that there are sieve plates present at the end wall of each sieve tube element, which is the most striking feature of them. Uh, whereas there was no end wall present in the zone. So, so that's the longitudinal section. You see if the element there are plasma gas meta present here for the transport of the flow and set. See if you see if plate which we have discussed which allowed the mass flow of the flow and set. Mass flow we are going to discuss in detail. And now we will talk about the companion cell which is present right here in the pink. That's the transfer section which contains the cytoplasm. They have the organelles, they do have the nucleus present, and they have numerous amount of mitochondria present because companion cells are the ones which do the process of the which is a part of transport of fluid cell and other nutrients. So I will just show you another picture for your better understanding. Here you go. This is the companion cell. You can observe there are mitochondria, rough endoplasmic reticulum, cell membrane, plasma desmita for the transport of the liquid from one cell to another that is basically from the here to the neighboring cell. They do have the vacuole present, nucleus present in cytoplasm. Vacuoles and chromoplast. So, this is how a phloem sees to element and its companion cell looks like. Main thing to understand over here is companion cells have a huge number of mitochondria present to provide the energy for loading of the phloem. We are going to discuss here for you. So, I hope you guys are clear with the structure of the phloem, which is quite different from that of these islands. We have the sieve tube element. Just I am making a quick note. Sieve tube elements. Okay. Then they have the sieve plates, which are the pores for the transportation of the uh, of phloem sap from one cell to another cell. Okay. They are vertically uh, uh, joined. Then we have the companion cell. Which is the main feature, which is like the always accompanied with the sieve tube elements. They are the ones which contain the mitochondria in numerous forms. Mitochondria are the ones which provides the ATP. So mitochondria will be required in the activity of the flow. That's unique. Hope you are clear with this structure. Once the structure is known, you can understand well how the translation happens. So let's directly get started without wasting more time. Now, as mentioned earlier at the start of the video, uh, transportation of this particular nutrient, that is food, which has been prepared from source. To sink, that's what a translocation is. Translocation means transferring something from one place to another. Here, what it means is transportation from the source, the region where the food is being made, to the sink, to the root. This is the general scenario which I am talking right now. Leaf in general, where photosynthesis takes place, where food is being prepared, that's the source. And the sink is the root, the growing region. Over here, the sink could be the shoot also because they are also growing. But this is not the case uh, all the time. It may vary according to the seasons, according to the need of the plant. So you can just take a movement over, uh, movement over here and uh, um, make a note 
of all the sources and the things which changes according to the seasons. Okay, I can just give you a moment. You can pause the video and you can just make a note that who all can be the source, who all can be the sink. But in general, just remember one definition of source is where production is made. Production of food. So basically, where the uh, photosynthesis is taking place. So production is source of food. And sink, on the other hand, will be where this food is required or where the unloading of the food is taking place. Where this food needs to be used. That's the sink. So that's the concept of source to sink which you guys need to think. Yep. So I hope you guys are ready to go in depth of how translocation occurs. So let's start. It's very easy. I'll teach you step wise. So don't worry. Don't hesitate. At the end, I'll revise each step also. But please make sure that you will make the notes wherever required for this video. So first of all, I'll just give you the overall scenario. Of how this particular process takes place. So this is the source. I'll just give you the intro. Don't worry. This is the source. Companion cells. This is the phloem tube. Here what we are doing is we are transferring the food made from the source down to the phloem tube into the sink. So that's what overall thing which is happening here. Uh, here are the position of each of these cells. Source sucrose, basically the mesophyll weak cells, companion cells, phloem, again the companion cells and the roots. Here the xylem are also the one which is helping in transportation of the food. So let's see how this whole scenario takes place.